Ark, how's everybody? Good to see you all this evening. Welcome back to our seventh and final evening together. So uh, my name is Pastor Monty Robinson. I have the privilege of being the, the lead pastor of this awesome Seventh-day Adventist Church here at Avon Park and also uh, a brother pastor to other uh, pastors in the area here. We're all meeting together and having a... Have we had a pretty good time this week? Hasn't this been awesome? Yeah, yeah. Good stuff, good stuff. Really appreciate you being here. I want to welcome those that are online, our online audience. I would have to say is impressive. Uh, they've been running in the 150, 160, and, and more audience every night. This is just great. Adding folks on, we just want to welcome you as well. There will be some prizes for us all at the end, so that's uh, something to look forward to. But I want to say some other things here, uh, particularly for those watching virtually online. Uh, tell your friends, even now, tell your friends to go to our YouTube channel or our Facebook, uh, Facebook page and, and log on and be a part of our worship service and the, the wonderful teaching that's going on. Have you appreciated uh, Pastor Hernandez this week and his approach to the gospel? Yeah, yeah, really good stuff, really appreciate that. Um, we probably are not going to get to our questions tonight because we have something special. We have a baptism. I know we said something about it the other evening. It's definitely happening tonight. We have a number of folks that have given their hearts to the Lord and are going to be baptized in just a few minutes toward the end of our service. So I want you to know that. Uh, the gifts tonight, there are Bluetooth headphones for the on-site, a Hope t-shirt, and some artist merchandise this evening and for our online folks there will be another uh, Amazon gift card and another ebook uh, available. Now I'm going to introduce for those of you who've been here you don't need an introduction exactly but I'm going to introduce our speaker Pastor Roger Hernandez. He will be speaking in a few moments after our musical guest. I, I don't know if you've noticed there are people behind me over here. Have you noticed that? They're going to be singing to us in just a little bit, and they're going to be uh, introduced in just a minute better than I can. So, But I want to introduce Roger. Um, have you noticed that he loves to make others laugh? That he has a sense of humor? And it, and it has a point? Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, his family says that he's kind of a master of the dad joke. You know that, right? Yeah. Where they go, oh, man, they groan, you know, they, they do that around my house, too, so that's a good thing. So if you know of any good dad jokes, uh, share them with him. He loves that. All right, come on up and introduce the choir here, and we will roll on. Good evening. You will be hearing the uh, choir from the Faizdak. Faizdak means Filipino-American International SDA Church. And we are delighted this evening that we're part of this uh, series, this campaign. Uh, they started when I was not here yet, 2010. I'm barely three months from since uh, November or de December. But anyway, uh, you know, two things that we are, I'm so happy with this uh, group. They love food and they love music. And so that's why we are part of the Faizdak. And I'm going to challenge you tonight. If you want to be part of this uh, wonderful uh, choir, and if you know how to sing, or not even, you know, just a little bit of, <laughs> you can always call us and join us, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you will like what they like, food and music. And so ladies and gentlemen, my dearly beloved, let's all welcome Faizda Choir. Good evening, everyone, and a happy Sabbath. It is a blessing to be here as we welcome the Sabbath. The song I will first be playing is entitled, My Jesus, I Love Thee. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee, all the follies of sin I resign. My gracious Redeemer, my Savior art thou. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. I love thee because thou hast first loved me and purchased my pardon on Calvary's tree. I love thee for wearing the thorns on thy brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. 
I love this song so much because it talks about God's love for us, despite of our imperfections and our problems. Praise God that we have a risen Savior.
all the masterpieces of painting contain both light and shadow. By them, the artist highlights certain features of his subject and they provide contrast and harmony to reveal beauty or character. A happy life is not one filled only with sunshine, but one that uses both light and shadow to produce beauty. Let us not despise the shadows God brings into your life. He can use them both to produce a masterpiece. Our first song is titled, Look at the World.
When Jesus Christ was on the cross, his blood draining the life from his body, he knew what it was like to be alone and wrecked with pain. Why did Jesus suffer? Because God loves us. Because God loves you. And Christ willingly went to the cross for you. There was no other way for sin's penalty to be paid and for us to be redeemed. The cross is the measure of God's love. How will you respond to his love poured out on the cross for you?
Good evening, everybody. As we have done every night, uh, let's affirm the gift that God has given the musical guests for tonight. We've had all kinds of different genres and styles. Uh, it's always nice to hear a choir. Uh, how many of you are thankful for the music tonight? Yes, thank you very much. And as we do every night, this is our last night together. Tomorrow morning, we're going to be meeting in different locations around the area and Frostproof and here in Avon Park and Filipino Church and also in Sebring, uh, the Ridge. Uh, but uh, tonight, we want to, as we have done for the, the last seven days, greet the people right there next to us and thank them. And we thank not just them, but we th want to thank in a special way the volunteers that have been a blessing to us all week long. What a great group of volunteers. Thank you, volunteers. Yes. Let us pray and let us jump right into the message tonight. Heavenly Father, once again we thank you because we've never been far from you, from your mind. You draw us home. You invite us. And tonight as we speak again, may you personalize a message, customize a message, make it personal for every single person that's watching online and here in the building. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody said that better questions produce better outcomes. If you think about it, questions are the foundation of progress. The reason why we have the advancements we have had in different areas of our life is because somebody asked a question about what is possible and why does it have to be the same way or why can't we do something different and tonight as we have done every night I want to share with you three questions that are going to fundamentally impact your life and I want you to think about them as I'm preaching and adapt them into the mindset that you want to have as you grow in Christ. These are questions you can share with people. By the way, you can share you know, the link of the messages. If you found them helpful, bless somebody else. But here are three questions that I want to share with you tonight. The first one is, who will I disappoint? There is no such thing as a disappointment-free zone. Every decision you make disappoints somebody. It is impossible. It's like, well, I, I'm not with them or for them uh, or against them. I just, I'm going to be neutral. Not making a decision is making a decision. So I have to ask myself, who am I going to disappoint? I personally want to live my life keeping the devil in a constant state of disappointment about my life. Somebody say amen. I want to keep the devil in a constant state of disappointment. Tonight I'm going to preach from a book in the Bible called Exodus. Exodus is the second book of the Bible. And it contains the story of the people of Israel as they were delivered from Egypt by the strong hand of God. And we see this choice, this question being asked early in the book. There was a law, there was a request that came from the government. Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, gave this order to the Hebrew midwives, Shifra and Pua. Those are baby names, there you go. <laughs> when, <laughs> when you help the Hebrew women as they give birth, watch as they deliver. And what's the order that he's given them? If the baby is a boy, what's the order, everybody? If the baby is a boy, do what with the baby? Kill him. If it's a girl, 
let her live. These two women, a little bit of unknown characters in the Bible, they hear that there is an order. And the order is, if the baby is a boy, you are going to kill them. So they have to ask themselves, who am I going to disappoint? Because by not obeying the order of the Pharaoh, they were going to disappoint him. This is what they chose to do. They chose rights. This is what they chose to do. Because the midwives fear God, they refuse to obey the king's order, and they allowed the boys to live too. How many of you are proud of these women? All right? and no matter who's asking, if it goes against God's will, I'm not responding. It doesn't matter who's asking. It doesn't matter if you're close to me, if you're my friend, if you're somebody who's my boss. If you're asking me to go contrary to my beliefs in Scripture, the answer is going to say, it's going to be no. I have to ask myself, who am I going to disappoint? Early on, when I got married, I noticed that I became a little bit like my dad, who was a workaholic. So I wasn't present in the beginning. I was, my wife was working a, as a teacher, so when she went to work really early in the morning, I was sleeping, and when, I, when she came home, I was out doing pastoral work, and when I came home, she was sleeping, and this was our life. And then about 10 years in, into our marriage, and our kids were still young, I realized that I chose to disappoint my family the most. And somebody gave me really good advice. They said, if you have to, if, it's good that you don't have to choose, but if you have to choose, don't disappoint your family. Because people are going to be with you for a while, for a season, for a time being. But your family is going to be with you forever. So I, we made that decision. And I, and I, and I told myself, I'm going to be present. I'm going to give my family, the gift of presence. We might not have a lot of things. So we chose, here's for the parents in the room, especially if you have uh, kids at home still. We chose as parents that we will prioritize the giving of experiences over gifts. Because experiences will stay with you forever, but a gift can be disposed in two months. So we prioritize the gift of presence. I'm, if I'm going to disappoint somebody, I'm not going to disappoint my family. So he said, I'm gonna, we're going to be present. We're going to show up to our kids' games. Our, our kids played sports, uh, you know, baseball, and they played soccer and basketball. And we showed up. We showed up to every game. I think I missed like four games in the whole high school career. Four games. We were there in the stands. We wanted them to be imprinted in their minds that when they saw the stand, their parents were there. It was a terrible experience. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to just, I mean, my kids here, but they play for Avenue schools. They always lost. <laughs> it's like 53 to 2 in the first quarter. It's like, <laughs> how am I doing that? Great, son. Great. Amazing, fantastic. And we made the following decisions. We said, we're not going to disappoint our family. So we're going to choose, we're going to filter every decision in our home through these three lenses. You want to write something down or take a picture of something? These are the lenses you have to take. You have to make your decisions through. Number one, we're going to choose the important over the urgent. I found that if we choose the important, God usually takes care of the urgent. Number, number two, we're going to choose the permanent over the temporary. And number three, we're going to choose the best over the good. In every decision we make, we want to filter through those. Have we been perfect? No. But I am so thankful as a parent as my kids have left the house, see, when your kids leave the house, you're going to either feel regret or nostalgia. Nostalgia is a much better companion. They're only going to be here for a season. They're going to go. So that's the first question you have to ask yourself. Some of you, 
related to spiritual matters, some of you have been sitting every night. And I'm a, I've been making invitations and you've been thinking about turning your life over to Jesus or returning to him. And, you're like, and then all these negative thoughts are coming into your mind. But if I do it and what if I don't? Last night I was, I had a conversation with a young man who was just bawling. And, and he came after the, the service was over and he said, I'm, I almost went up, but I have a fear. This is what he said. I have a fear. I don't want to disappoint God. I don't want to fail him. That's why I'm afraid of going up. I'm like, listen, every time there's an invitation and you respond in a positive, you're disappointing the devil. You're not disappointing God. God loves you. He understands. In fact, I will promise you there are some things you're going to do that are not going to be the right thing. But now you are in the circle. You're protected from the lions that are trying to mess with your life. Every time we say yes to Jesus, we disappoint the devil. I want to live my life telling the devil to live in a constant state of disappointment. Every time there's an invitation and you're able to say yes to Jesus, you're able to send a message to the devil, you have no rule over me. I want to make God smile and the devil frown. Number two, the second question we have to ask ourselves, well, let's just review, let's see how, how good our short-term memory is. What's the first question we have to ask ourselves? Every day, every day, every decision, we have to filter it through this one question. What's the first question? Who will I disappoint? Number two, when will I do it? And the it in do it, the it could be many things for you. It can be when am I going to go back to school? That's the it for some of you. You've been working for a while, but you've been, to, you've been meaning to finish that degree. It could be when am I going to change jobs? It may be I'm going to launch my own business. I'm going to become an entrepreneur. It may be. I'm going to start a relationship, so I'm going to look around and see what kind of positive, available, godly people are around my age that I can start talking to. And then you just got to shoot your shot. You have to do it. You can't be thinking about it forever. I, I, I don't know if I told you this last time that I was here, but, you know, my, my, my sister-in-law and my brother-in-law are... are been married now for like eight, nine years, have a child, but it was really hard for them because both of them were single and he was very afraid of just shooting his shot. He's like, mm, what if I ask her out? And she says, no, I'm going to wait. And I was like, if you ask her out and she says, no, how was how does that affect your situation? Because you're single, you ask her out, and she says, no, you're still single. There are no such thing as single to the second degree. <laughs> there are no super single categories. <laughs> there are no extra crispy singles. Just, just shoot. Do it. Do it. Bitter people, when they're older, are not people who tried and failed are people who didn't try and wish they had. When will I do it? So he was like, okay, asked her out. She said no. I said, ask again. Second time, she said no. Third time is a charm. She said, we're going to go out as friends, but that's it. They've been married for like seven years. They have a child together. When I need any type of work, he's a contractor. And I'm like, hey, need some help at the house? He's like, wow, too busy, you live too far. Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask myself, when is the it? When is the it? Maybe a commitment to Jesus is the it. Maybe a decision to be baptized is the it. Maybe a decision to, yeah, this year is going to be different from other years because I'm really going to apply myself in school. When is the it going to happen? In the Bible, there's a story. 
book of Exodus again. I don't know how many of you have watched the Ten Commandments, the movie, the Ten Commandments. Right? The Ten Commandments is a movie of the people of Israel, right, being delivered. And Moses shows up to Egypt and tells the Pharaoh, who's like, you know, the person in charge, and looks him in the eye and says, what's the famous phrase? Anybody remember the famous phrase? Let my people go. And the Pharaoh is like, no, man, I like, I like free labor. And, 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 and Moses is like, well, I'm going to pray so you understand that you don't rule yourself. And then God sends to encourage Pharaoh to let them go something called plagues. Some bad stuff starts happening, right? So Pharaoh understands he's not the rule of anything. And God sends these plagues in most of them I understand because the river becomes blood and there's like darkness. But there's one I don't understand. There's one plague where God sends frogs. Millions and billions of frogs. Frogs everywhere. Go to the bathroom, frogs there. Get in the middle of the night, get some like a cup of water. There's frogs in the floor. Turn over to kiss your husband. It's a frog. And it doesn't turn into a prince. No, it's just a frog. It's a frog. Frogs everywhere. Frogs in your food. And you're vegetarian. Frogs with tofu don't taste very good. Frogs. 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 What are frogs? Let me just define it for you. I want you to repeat it. I'm going to repeat it a couple of times so you can learn the definition. Frogs are things that don't kill you. They just get in the way. The frogs had no venom in them. They were not killing anybody. Frogs are things in your life. What's the definition of frogs? Things that don't kill you, but get in the way. You have any of those? Here's the thing. Most of us have frogs. Some of us have it in our purses, right? Um, we have survival stuff for 30 days and a frog. There's frogs. People came, frogs in pockets. There's, you've named them your frogs. It's like, I'm always going to have a temper. I'm always going to be, it's impossible for me not to. I'm always going to have this issue with food or whatever it is. And you've, you've tried to excuse all these frogs. These are things that don't kill you. They just get in the way from the life it's called you to be. And here's the conversation. This is a very odd conversation, by the way. It's going to be, actually, when I, when I read it, it makes me laugh. Because here's the conversation between Moses and the Pharaoh. Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and begged. So now he's changed his tune, you see. Plead with the Lord to take the frogs away from me and from my people. I will let your people go so they can offer sacrifices to the Lord. I know it's, it's kind of small, the print there, but do you see what the next four words say there? What's the next four words? You set the time. This is Moses talking to Pharaoh. You tell me when you want me to pray for you and your officials and your people, and then you and your houses will be, free, will be free, rid of the frogs. They will remain in the Nile River. Okay. Role play, role play time. I'm Moses and you're Pharaoh, just for this moment. And I ask you, when do you want the frogs gone? You set the time. Remember, what are frogs? Things that they don't kill you, but they, they get in the way. And I tell you, when do you want these things gone? What is the logical answer to that request? Now is the only logical answer. When do you want this stuff to go? These, are, these things are getting on my nerves. That's why I find it very odd, the answer from the Pharaoh. You know what he's saying? Somebody said, but the Pharaoh, he's, was, what he's saying is, I want one more night with the frogs. <laughs> and before we are too harsh with Pharaoh, you and I are the same way. 
I'm going to start my diet. I'm going to have that conversation that's hard and difficult. I'm going to have it. I'm not saying I'm not going to have it. I'm going to have it. I'm just going to do it tomorrow. I'm going back to school tomorrow. I'm going to get that car fixed. Uh -huh. I'm going to finish that project in my house in the bathroom. Somebody, that's too close for somebody here. I mean, you're too close. My pastor, stop reaching that, please. <laughs> Tomorrow, see, if the devil cannot destroy you, he will delay you. He has no issue with you saying, I'm going to do it. Sure. I'm turning my life over to Jesus. Of course, I'm going to be baptized. Of course, I'm going to be rebaptized. Of course, I'm going to start again. Of course, I'm going to start reading my Bible. Um, of course, I'm going to finally get married and stop living in sin. Of course, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. And he has no problem with you saying that as long as you attach one word to every single statement. What's the word? Tomorrow. So the question is, when will you do it? When will you do it? The problem is that we think that we have to do it first and then come to Christ. We don't change so we can come to Christ. We come to Christ so change is possible. That's the way you do it. So you've been trying to work at this the wrong way. The wrong way. You've been trying to say, yes, I'm going to do it eventually. So I'm going to tell you three phrases because the loudest voice in your head, because you have in your voice, in your, in your head, voices that say, no, it's impossible. You're not going to do it. That's, those, those are easy. We are born negative and we have to learn to be positive. That's why when we're born, we're born crying, not smiling. So the loudest voices are usually the ones that win. The loudest voices are not the most important ones. <coughs> That's, these are things that I say to myself. When I don't want to work out, when I don't want to have a conversation, I don't know if you've ever been laying, laying in bed with a pending conversation with a spouse. That's hard, man. It's like, man, I want to, every fiber in my being wants to do it tomorrow. But we have discovered the power of pre-deciding. We pre-decided, my wife and I, that today's problems will address today. That we're not going to go mad, go to bed mad. We already pre-decided that. So when I get in bed and I want to wait till tomorrow, I've already pre-decided. So I tell myself these things. I tell myself these three things. I say, do it, do it now, and do it before you're completely ready. That have been life-changing for me. When I don't want to work out, when I don't want to have that hard conversation, when I don't want to go somewhere, I'm, I say to myself, you have to do it. Because... Automatically, the voices in my head are like, you already worked out two days in a row. What are you? What do you want to be? You're, a past you're just a pastor. All pastors have bellies. All pastors. <laughs> they all wear shorts with black socks. It's a thing. <laughs> it's called the pastoral belly. Every single pastor has it. Why, Why are you like a maniac? So those are, the, those are the voices that I fight in my head. So I had to do, no, do it. And then I say, do it when? Now. I only have 20 minutes to exercise. That's fine. 20 minutes is better than zero minutes. I only have time to go two laps around the block. That's two laps more than the person who stayed in their couch. And the last one has been a revelation to me. It's like, I thought I had to have it all together before I can take a step. And I've learned across 56 years of life that for most important things, you weren't ready before you started. 
How many of you were perfectly ready to be parents? How many of you were perfectly ready to be married? Remember the first years in marriage? You're like, man, why is this person not normal like me? <laughs> Every decision, when you, the first day you started at your new job, were you capable? Do you know how to put the roof on? You, were you, did you understand exactly how to do the two by fours and cut them up? Do you, do, you, you knew exactly how everything worked in the politics of the office? Do you understand everything? No, we learn on the way. And guess what? Let me tell you a little secret. I want you to tell the person next to you this little secret. It's a secret. Nobody knows it. You just got it here tonight because you're blessed. Here's a secret, okay? Pick, pick a neighbor to the left, to your right, the one you like the least. Just pick a neighbor, pick a neighbor, and tell them the secret. Tell them the secret. Nobody knows what they're doing. Nobody knows what they're doing. So for me, my pre-decisions are, if God is asking me to do something, I pre-decided that on Sunday, today is Friday, that on Sunday morning, I'm going to run. So when Sunday morning comes, I don't have to decide Sunday morning, do I feel like running? Do I feel like not running? I've already decided. I have my, my shorts and my socks and my, my hokas. Hokas are the best shoes in the world. Somebody say amen. And, and, they, and I have my stuff ready to go. Change. Hear me out, everybody. Change starts with two words. I decided. Not I felt. Feelings are overrated. Feelings come and go. I cannot base my relationship with my wife on feelings. It's like I remember one time they asked Billy Graham's wife, have you ever thought about divorce? And she said, divorce, never. Murder, sometimes. <laughs> and at times, and it's true, there's times you want to kill your spouse. Like, not, not in a real way, but in a, like, what is this person doing? You're getting on my last nerve. You don't go on divorce because you pre-decided. I'm staying in this relationship. I'm committed to this relationship. Even though sometimes you get on my nerves because you do the same thing I've asked you 50 times. Put the stuff down after you use the bathroom. Do it right. Don't watch everything together, Roger. I don't know why I'm even preaching about myself today. Listen, you have to, you have to, it, this feeling stuff is like, I don't feel it yet. I don't feel that, that I can. I don't feel, who cares about your feelings? Feelings come and go. Decisions is what changes the world. People that get up and do stuff, even though they don't feel like that, but they know it's the right thing to do. And feelings usually follow decisions. Feelings are great passengers, but terrible drivers. They're not meant to drive your life. Don't suppress them. Don't ignore them, but don't let them lead. I'm going to make a decision. And there's going, to be, there's going to be days in your life with Christ that you're going to feel him far away. Like, is he even listening? Is he answering my prayers? What is going on? But I stick with God, even on days like that, because I know he got me. And here's the last question. What kind of God? Well, let's review the questions. First question was what? Hmm. Who will, I, who will I disappoint? The second question is, when will I do it? And the third question is, what kind of God do I serve? The picture you have of God impacts directly. There is not, it's not only correlation, it's causation on what decisions you make in life. The picture you have of God. I like this picture of God. This is a God that delivered Israel. After 400 years and after all the stuff that had happened, after the death of the king of Egypt, the Israelites still complained because they were forced to be slaves. They cried out for help. And God, this, this last text here, it just, it's, 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 a, it's an amen text. It's a text that we just make some type of noise because we just affirm what the scripture says. 
And God heard their loud cries, and he did not forget the promise. You serve a God who's heard you, even though you didn't think that he was. You serve a God that keeps his promises to you, not in your time, but in his. And as we look at how all this works, we try to appease a God that should be loved. That's pagan. Pagans appease their gods. Christians love their God. We worship our God. We don't appease him with offerings. We don't work ourselves up to his good graces. He showed his good graces on a Friday when he died for our sins. So instead of trying to change on your own way, these are, these are the ways that we try to change. Allow God to do for you what you cannot do for yourself. These are all like wrong ways to try to change. People trying to change because of experiences like this. I already did it, I already did it one time. I already made that mistake one time. I'm never going to do it again. False. Most of the issues that you have in your life and I, most of them are patterns. Most of your issues are patterns. They're, one, they're not one ofs. They're patterns. The issues that you have right now that you're dealing with, that you've been dealing with for a while, they are patterns. And if you could have gotten rid of those frogs, what are frogs? Things that don't, uh-huh, but... Mm -hmm. If you could have gotten rid of those frogs, you would have by now. You would have. Number two. I want to promise God that I'm going to be able to do it. Here's, a, here's an important distinction. Stop promising God stuff. There's a great book called Steps to Christ that says that our promises are like ropes of sand. The key to a victorious Christian life is not you promising God anything. It's you believing the promises God has made to you. Place. I'm going to change when I move out of this house. Because right now I'm living with my in-laws and they're getting on my last nerve. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move. And you think that place is what's making the difference. Here's the problem. You follow yourself around. Wherever you go, there you are. Mm -hmm. You are the only common denominator in all of your mistakes. So place is not going to make, it's, it's not going to make the ultimate difference. Then some people want to feel that they have to change by threat. The, the, world, the world is ending. You got to change your life. Shape up because the world is ending. Threats don't change people. All it does is sends them underground to do, do, do the same thing, but try to hide it better. And then the last one is shame. I can't believe you. You would do that? We don't shame people into conversion. The Bible says in Romans chapter 2 and verse 4, it is the kindness of God that leads me to repentance. I'm not shamed into repentance. It's the kindness of God that leads me there. So, I want to finish with these two passages. Then I'm going to make, I'm going to have a prayer. What's the kind of God that you serve? Does he deserve your loyalty, your worship, and your allegiance? This is a God that is not far away. He's accessible. I could not trust a God who looks from afar about my suffering. The reason I follow Jesus is because he doesn't look from afar. He's not in the grandstand looking at what's happening down there. He entered my pain and he entered my world and he entered exactly, he knows exactly what I'm going through because that God, the Bible says the following, you can seek God while he can still be found. You can call out to God. He is near. Give up your evil ways. 
in your evil thoughts. It starts in the mind that impacts how you behave and return to our God and he will be merciful and forgive your sins. What an amen verse. That's why we choose to take the decision to go under the water. Tonight we're going to have a baptism. How many of you are thankful for this baptism and the decision tonight? It's amazing. It's amazing. Anytime somebody, the reason that we do this is so people can, can see that there's change in Jesus. This is what the, te the text says. Baptism is more than just washing your body. It means turning to God with a clear conscience because Jesus Christ was raised from death. What would it mean to you to live with a clear conscience? Not be constantly reminded of your regrets and your mistakes. You can start over and be raised from death to life. So I'm going to be very specific tonight. If you want to make the decision to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, go under the water, not sprinkling, because you don't need sprinkling on your head. You need an immersion because it's the full you that you want to give to God. And you go under the water and come back out. The date, will figure it out. Tonight is just a decision. This is what I want to do. I want to serve a God that is for me. I want to serve a God that can give me a clean conscience. I want to serve a God that can help me, that can bless me, that can challenge me. A God that is big enough that I can worship and small enough that I have here in my heart. If this is your decision, I don't know if you're 15 or 33 or 35, I want to go under the water. Or this is something that you did before, but you and God got a divorce. Like you've been disconnected and you want to reconnect with him, I'm going to ask you to stand from your seat and come join me in this platform. There's a lot of people praying for you tonight because some of you have been listening, I've been thinking about it, and I'm just going to invite you. It's not, it's not about feelings. It's about decisions. It's saying, I decided. I want to do this, Pastor. Some of you are going to want to do it tomorrow. Some of you are going to want to do it in two weeks because you want to do it in the lake. Uh, you know, with wonderful crocodile-free lakes that we have around here. Some of you want to do it in the beach, wherever it is. Some of you want to do it in your own local church. But I just want, I, I might be speaking to five people or seven people or ten people, but I know there's more than one person in this room that needs to make a decision and saying, I decided. Not because I feel like it, but because I know it's the right thing to do. I've laid it out. There's no reason for you to go home with the same frogs you came here with. There's no reason why you should live the life you're living. There's a better life in Jesus. Following Jesus makes your life better and makes you better at life. All right. For some of you, it's a very scary moment. Don't worry. All we're going to do is pray for you. Who can I pray for? Who's the first person who says, Pastor, I need this prayer. I, I need to return to God. I need to, to say, yes, I decided. Just wherever you are, stand on your feet and join me in this altar right here in the front. Who's the first one? The first one is the most difficult one. That breaks the ice, right? That breaks the ice. We're not setting dates, right? We're not taking you in the back and putting a robe on you. We're just going to pray for you. I know you're thinking about it. I'm giving you a little moment to think about it and process this invitation. But if this is you and you want to reconnect with God or connect with him for the first time, this is the night to do it. Come, come, come. We got we to gotta affirm the people that are coming. Breaking the ice is not hard, not easy. We got to have the... God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? Anybody else is here that wants to say yes, yes. Yes, I want to. Yes, yes, Pastor. Please pray for me. Yes. Who's the next one? Who is the next one? <coughs> it's, it's not an easy decision, but it's a necessary one. There's no reason why you need to go home with the same frogs you came here with. There is no reason. We're going to just turn our lives over to Him, right? And all these voices in your head, it's time for us to, to say yes. Who else can I pray for? Who else can I pray for? Come, come. 
Come to the altar. Somebody here on the front, on the side. Where are you at? I'm not, I don't like to make long appeals. And I don't want to have threats and, and concerns. I want you to come because God is speaking to you. Come, 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 come. Come. Yes. Yes. Break the ice even more. I don't want you to come because you're afraid of hell, but because you're in love with heaven. And more importantly, the God of heaven. Who else? I might probably wait for like five more. Come. I see some people in the back. Yes. I see some people in the back. Maybe five more that are here. Yes. They're talking to each other. Yes. Don't, don't get tired of affirming them. Yeah. Don't get tired. This is a hard decision. I'm telling you. I know. I've been there. I've been there. Some of you have been there too. And it's like, Pastor, why can't I make the decision right here? Why can't I make this decision right here in my seat? Let me just share with you something. When they crucified Jesus, he died for us in a public place. The least we can do is decide for him in a public place as well. I want my decision to go public. I don't want to hide it in a card. I want to declare publicly because Jesus died for me publicly that I want to live for him publicly as well. I'm not trying to keep my decision with Jesus on the down low. I want to make people know and I want people to understand that I am a follower of Jesus because it makes my life better and makes me better alive. Who else? There's at least two more people that need to come. Who's thinking about it? Who's struggling right now? Just imagine thinking for the rest of your life, I made that decision on Good Friday. Significant. We, we don't know Jesus didn't die on this day. But he died on a Friday. And this is a great opportunity for us to say yes. Right? I'm going to run over to the other location. But I'm just going to wait just a couple seconds more. Who is the last two people who are going to say yes tonight? Pastor, me. Come. My young person, maybe a couple, maybe. He's like, well, I've been here just a little while, but it doesn't matter. There's people praying for you. You need a thousand years to know one thing, that you're lost and Jesus can save you. You need a thousand years to know that. Right? Are you sure you don't want to come? I, w I would love to pray for you. I would love to look you in the eye and say, yep, you belong to him. No need to go home with the same frogs you came here with. Things that kill you, don't kill you but get in the way, don't need to do the same thing again. All right? I'm going to pray. I'm going to give you a couple moments. Who are, is there anybody else that needs to come? Is there anybody else? Is there somebody outside that needs to come? Come, there, run. Yes, yes. Somebody ought to make some noise. Yeah, somebody ought to make some noise and thank God and praise Him and worship Him. Thank you very much for coming. God bless you. All right, I have exactly 10 seconds before I pray. Is there anybody else that says, yeah, I thought almost to the end, but, but I uh, imagine making that decision and saying yes to Jesus tonight. Imagine what that means. God bless you. God bless you. Oh. God bless you. We are so thankful. We're thankful for you. Are we proud of, of them? Yes, are we proud of them? You see how they're, they're, they're affirming you? It's nothing compared with the party that God is throwing in heaven right now. You know what you've done right now? You know what you've done tonight? Do you know what you've done tonight? You disappointed the devil. <laughs> you made Jesus very happy. Just do this until he comes back. All right, is there anybody else? Any, any, is there one more person? Don't be afraid. Anybody else? All right. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I want to pray right now for the people here in front. We can just picture you in heaven stopping everything to look and affirm the decisions that have been made. The devil is upset, but 
we don't mind and we don't care but what he does as long as we know what you have done for us on a Friday night you gave up your life so we can have a life of our own and we're thankful for that and on this special weekend after this special week we pray that you will confirm the decisions that we might say yes to you and make sure every day of our lives from now on that we serve a God of grace, of love, of intentionality that created us with a purpose that we don't have to live wondering whether God loves us or not. He showed it on the cross. We bless them. We pray for them. And we thank you for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. There's a song we're going to sing tonight. Precious souls have made the decision to follow him. Now, when they arise from that watery grave and a new life in Christ, I want you to show them some love because they've made that decision, that wonderful, beautiful, powerful decision to follow him tonight. So I want you to clap your hands and rejoice with our baptismal decisions tonight for the beautiful decision that they've made. Now, our first baptism for decision is... Haley Tipton, I would like to invite Haley's family and friends to please come forward here to the front. She has some, uh, some family and some friends that are here. I'd like to invite them to come forward as they get to witness this beautiful decision to follow him. Amen. 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 You can clap. It's okay. We're praising God right now. Praise, praise God. Okay. Go ahead and grab a hold of my arm, just like you talked about. Very good. It is my absolute privilege to baptize Haley. She is a young believer. Her heart is full of love for her Lord. She is beginning her walk 
And baptism is just the beginning, but it's a great beginning because Jesus has us all the way through. No matter what happens, no matter, even if we make mistakes, Jesus is there. He's kind, he's good, he has all the power we need. And uh, this is wonderful. And I need to tell you, um, it's a little chilly in here, isn't it? (laughs) Yes. Yeah. You can blame the pastor, maybe one of the other ones, for not telling the deacon to turn the heater on. (laughs) In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I now baptize you, Haley. There you go. (laughs) Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. Now we have our uh, second baptismal decisions Uh, for Jesus. I'd like to invite the families of Jessica Cabrera and Joel Cabrera to please come forward down here to the front. What's beautiful about this decision is this is a husband and wife um, decision that have come to want to make this decision publicly to follow him. What a beautiful time it is to share with their spouses to make this decision. And I'm glad that the family is here to be able to support them at this time. She uh, gingerly makes it down the steps to the uh, cool water. (laughs) So this is what we have tonight, Jordan River. Yes, they're just getting used to this. Lovely. <laughs> Jessica and Joelle, come on up here. Let people see you. I'd like to invite the... Did we have the family come up already? Oh, oh, here they are, right here. Sorry, we were in the hall. <laughs> well, here we are. You're going to be first here. Think warm thoughts. thoughts. (laughs) Like a baseball bat? Perfect. Choke up. Good. I now baptize my friend, Joel, in the name of our Father, His Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 (laughs) Praise God. (laughs) You can have that. You can do it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I now baptize you, Jessica. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. (laughs) Our fourth and uh, final baptism decision for Jesus this evening is... Is Peggy Davis. I'd like to invite uh, Peggy's uh, friends and family that are here to come forward to the front as she makes her way into the However, baptismal Peggy's pool. Chair. Yeah. We've got... That's one. Amen. There's two. Yeah. It is. Think of a nice... Swim in the river. No alligators. I have decided okay, one more. Now it's you. No. Just watch the step here as you come in. It's beautiful to see the support that we are giving uh, Peggy here in the front with all her friends and the family of God supporting her.
cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me. No turning What a moment. Back. What a beautiful no moment. My direction, my direction. Yeah, there, there we go. Brent's going to be right, yeah. Sounds kind of like underneath. Yeah, you have it stand up. Very good. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I now baptize you. Please, Benjamin, it's okay. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> As they exit the baptismal pool, let's give them a hearty amen and hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Praise God for those beautiful decisions to follow him. As we are all part of the family of God tonight and forever. All right, at this time, I guess this is the last evening. It's kind of sad to see everything come to a close, but this evening I want to invite each and every one of you to turn in your connection cards. If you have any prayer requests or um, any questions you'd like to be, have answered, please uh, turn in your um, connection cards here. And for our online viewers, be sure to put down your questions on the online chat on our social media outlet, whether it be uh, YouTube or Facebook. Actually, on the prayer request, sorry, I, I, I correct myself. On the prayer request, uh, please put on the, uh, the website mentioned up there, helphopehere.com forward slash connect. I'm going to invite, I needed somebody, let's see, uh, let me maybe ask, uh, Pastor Ramsey, uh, you're, you're the uh, closest one to me here this evening, so I'll have you come forward and assist me as we select our final winners for this evening. All right, so our... Uh... Okay, do we, have the, uh, do we have the connection cards? They're on their way. On their way, okay, okay, good. It's exciting, we have... First, the first gift that we're going to give away are these Bluetooth headphones. They are Beats. I believe Beats by Dre. So, okay, here we go. Let's see who. Oh, we got some more. Oh, we don't want anybody to miss out. Any more cards? This is your last call. Our volunteers, do we have any more? Okay, we got a, we got a handful here. All right, good deal. Let's have Pastor Ramsey mix them up. Oh, we got one more. Yes, these are very nice, uh, nice headphones. You don't want to headphones. You don't want to miss out. Okay, here we go. Let's see who is the winner tonight. Suspense. We have Abel Ventura. Abel Ventura, the winner of the Bluetooth headphones. Okay, our next uh, gift for this evening is going to be our, our book, which is written by our speaker, Pastor Roger Hernandez. We have a Catherine Collins. Catherine Collins? <laughs> Catherine Collins. All right. Congratulations, Sister Collins, on winning the book. Okay. Next gift we are going to give for those who are here on site is this beautiful quilt. Okay, here we go. Suspenseful as I wave my hands in the box here, right? Okay, here we go. Let's see who we have. We have a Ruby Banaag. Ruby Banaag. Congratulations. Oh. 
Okay, now we're going to move to our online uh, winners this evening. For our online winners, those uh, winners are selected by those who are actively participating in the chat room. So our online winners are, are Norma Mendy and Lee Mendy. All right, we have the Amazon gift card and the ebook online. So for our online winners, please email that email that email that you see roger at rogerhernandez.org. Okay, for those of you who have come tonight for the toiletries giveaway, please stand by as we will give you further directions on what we are uh, what we need to do to be able to make sure that you get these uh, to get these toiletries that we're giving out tonight. So this evening, this is my final invitation. I am personally inviting you to come back tomorrow morning to one of the following churches uh, for uh, worship. We have first, you can either come here tomorrow, the Avon Park SDA Church, and the address, address is listed up there on the screen for uh, morning worship. We have the Filipino American International SDA Church, which is just around the corner. If you see the school that's about a block from here, you just head straight down Oleander. We are located right there. Or if you want to, if you are located near Frostproof, Frostproof SDA Church on Scenic Highway, 530 North Scenic Highway as well. And we have the Ridge Area SDA Church on 507 West Hal McRae Boulevard in Avon Park. If you know where the mid-Florida is at that intersection, you make a left and uh, just go down and you'll see the uh, Ridge Church on your right. And we also have the Sebring SDA Church, which is down on State Road 17 towards, uh, Se in Sebring and head that way towards, uh, south towards Sebring. So I invite each and every one of you to come out and to experience God's blessings as we worship Him together in spirit and in truth. So I'd like to thank each and every one of you for coming out this evening, for being a part of this, this uh, wonderful event where we've come closer to know that there is hope in the world that we live in with trials and problems. We serve a risen Savior who is a solution to all life's problems and challenges, and praise God that we have a living Savior. Thank you all, and thank you for coming out, and have a blessed and restful evening, and we hope to see you tomorrow at one of our churches. Thank you, and God bless.